Hi there, it's Jessica from Chambray Blues. Today I'm going to show you how to put the binding on the outside of a pot holder. The fabric here is just fabric scraps from a quilting project that I had with a little bit of um, batting in the middle and it was free motion quilted on my machine uh, with a free motion quilting foot which was in my last video and today we're going to learn how to attach the binding. It's very simple. So here's how it works. I have a strip of leftover fabric. This is two and a half inches wide and I just measured it up against the um, pot holder. You want to leave a little bit of a tail, probably an inch and a half to two inches on the end. And I just kind of went along here, matched the size just to make sure that it was big enough for the pot holder. So when I walk it all the way around, I can see I have plenty of extra fabric uh, left over at the end to make a loop for the pot holder. Like this one, I made. that's how I made the loop here. It's one piece with the binding. So here's how we're gonna sew it. You can use pins if you like. I just put it under the machine uh, without pins and just sew from there. So I'm gonna turn you so you can see what's happening here. There we are. I'm using a 3.0 stitch length on my machine. Just a regular straight stitch. And we're gonna fold the binding in half and line up the edges. And I'm using half inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to stitch it all the way to the corner. And when I get about a half inch from the corner, I'm going to use the wheel on the side of the machine to put the needle down in the fabric, pick up the presser foot, and then I'm going to turn the fabric to the side and see how it makes this little flap right here. We're going to do um, a version of a mitered corner. So I'm just going to fold that down and take a couple more stitches. You want to end with your needle in the fabric and you're going to pick up the presser foot, turn the pot holder the other direction, and then fold this little flap of fabric over so that's flat. And you want to make sure that you have about um, the same half inch seam allowance and that your um, all your pieces are lined up on the edge. So we're going to sew the next side. Again, we're going to get close to the edge, about a half an inch away, put my needle down in the fabric, pick up the presser foot, and then turn my P, my pot holder, and I'm going to fold the binding back so that it goes around the corner, and then I'm going to sew down the next side. corner. I'm going to turn it and fold my fabric that way and then line up the raw edges here like so. When I get to the point where the two seams are overlapping, I'm going to push this lower piece out 
and then sew across it. And here I'm going to back tack a couple of stitches and then I'm going to sew a little bit further because this is going to make the tail or the loop. So a few more inches. Back tack one more time. Okay. And I'm going to cut off this end and leave that piece for the loop. It's about three inches long. Okay, so here's the next step. We're going to turn the pot holder over. This time we're going to work from the back side. So we're going to trim your seam allowances to a quarter inch, first of all. There. Sharp scissors help with this. Then I'm going to fold that edge over the back. You can put a couple of pins in here to hold it in place. You're going to do that on all sides. And when you get to the corner, trim your corners um, at an angle so that you don't have a lot of bulky stuff there. And you can trim your other seam allowances as you go. Just make sure you don't trim your piece on the back. When you get to folding over the corner, you want it to look like a mitered corner. So I'm going to fold one side over the other and put a pin in there. It's sort of a cheater's way to make a mitered corner. Fold it all down all the way around the edge of the pot holder. Same thing at the corner. I'm going to fold one side under and fold the other one over the top so it looks neat. the last corner this is a great way to practice skills that you would use in making a quilt um, without having to worry a lot about it being perfect because it's just a pot holder and you can always um, just throw it out if it's not going to work for you so here at the end, we're going to cut off that short tail that we had before. That's going to leave us with just this long tail hanging off the end. And we're going to fold this uh, piece over and pin it one more time here. So when we get to the corner, 
we want to hide those raw edges that are in there. And we're going to do that just by folding the tip towards you about a quarter of an inch and then folding the whole piece in half so that those edges will be hidden inside the seam. You can press it if you prefer to hold it in place. I'm just going to use a couple of pins. Okay, so when we sew, we're going to start here and sew all the way around the edge of this piece to all four corners and then down to the edge here and then all that's left to do is to tack the loop in place. So I want to use the same stitch length and so as close as I can get to this side fold of the piece. It's helpful to line it up with the inside of your presser foot. That way it'll be a nice straight stitch all the way around. So I'm going to back tack a couple stitches and then sew. And be sure you don't sew over your pins. You have to take those out as you get close to them. Sometimes I have to pick up my presser foot and move that inside piece over a little bit with my finger so it stays where I want it to go. And when you get to the corner, put your needle down into the fabric, pick up the presser foot and pivot. And then you can sew down the next edge. Pivot again. There we are. And go down the next side. here. So we have completed the, the entire pot holder. Now we're sewing the loop and I'm just going to take pins out as I go and sew right along the same edge that's going to become our loop piece all the way to the very end. the 
and you can back tack it here. All right, now we're going to cut our threads. Okay, so there's my loop piece. Now all that's left to do is to fold it back and stitch across it on the other side to hold it in place. Back tack it. Okay, that is it. We'll trim our threads one more time. There you go. There's your pot holder. You've got the loop there. And this is what it looks like from the front. The binding is straight and top stitched along the edge. And from the back side, it's in place and it looks like you spent a lot of time putting it together, but it's really very easy. So that's all for this tutorial. You can find more information and tutorials on my website, chambrayblues.com. See you in the next video. Bye.